Well, good morning, good morning. This is Lady O here on this, actually this beautiful Wednesday morning. Uh, it is August the 30th, and I know that some of you uh, have been concerned and worried about us. You've been calling just to check on us, and we so appreciate that uh, due to the storm, Adelia. Uh, but you know what? God is always faithful. He's always good. Uh, as you can see, amen, we have uh, internet. We haven't lost power. We haven't lost internet. So I decided to come and make this uh, daily devotion today, which is, you know, normally I try to do them uh, at least least two to three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, but sometimes I'm so busy and my schedule get uh, away from me until I am not able to do that. But I am looking out uh, from my office uh, to a, a, a day that is not sunny as it usually be in Florida because of the hurricane, but it is not raining where I am living anyway. And I just thank God for uh, the city that I live in because you know what? A lot of times, even though we're only 10 miles from the Gulf of Mex Mexico, and on yesterday, I just really felt glad. I had been feeling glad uh, before the hurricane season came in and, and all last week and week before last to kind of go out to the Gulf and to the seas and, and to the, uh, the, the beaches to pray over the waters. And so yesterday, me and my husband, we did go out to a little area that we can kind of look out and see the Gulf and walk up, actually walk, walk right up to the Gulf. And uh, we did go out yesterday uh, and the waters were still calm over here. Here, and we began to pray and just uh, ask the Lord, uh, pray peace be still to the waters and began to uh, command the waters, amen, uh, to be still and, and pray for God's goodness and his mercy that maybe uh, he will direct the storm away from, you know, where we live so that, you know, we could have minimal damage, not that we want it to go and, and, and you know, to where any uh, population or, or, or any, uh, any anyone else to bring any damage to them, but uh, perhaps where he could direct it to go back out into the sea. And so as you can see on the uh, trajectory that you have been kind of watching, it kind of actually uh, deterred uh, enough to where it was going up I think it came in landfall up near around Tallahassee, where it would be actually going back out to sea. And so we give God all of the praise. You know, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And, and even though I'm coming to you with our, our daily devotion today, and, you know, I have been all year uh, dealing with overcoming fears. And the reason being is because of what I believe is going to be happening uh, in our nation. And, and what has already happened is nothing compared to what I believe is going to happen in the coming near uh, months and, and future. And so I believe God is preparing his people. He's preparing his people to, to become more anchored in him. And this is what's been on my heart. And I just kind of want to share a little bit of that today because I know I've been trying to stick with uh, the books that I'm writing, the overcoming the fears, the daily devotional. Uh, and, and I haven't really been giving you any prophetic words, any words that God has been uh, laying in my heart and giving to me in my prayer time. But I know that I know that I know that this is a time for us to really, uh, to really begin to seek God uh, uh, and, and to go deeper in him. And, and if you're a prayer warrior, it is time for you to uh, be on the wall and stay on the wall. It is time for you to say, God, I need a, I need a, a deeper dimension. I need a, another level in you. So you will be able to open my eyes to to see uh, as the sons of Issachar, they knew uh, and how to discern the times. They knew because they were able to see in the spirit realm. They were able to hear. And so this is a season where if you're on the wall as an intercessor, you need to stay. This is not a time for being relaxed or giving up or not digging your heels in, not making sure your anchor and your anchor is 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 on a sure, you know, is is gripping the solid rock that you're anchored really in the word of God and his truth. Uh, this is a time, amen, to be doing whatever you are supposed to be doing. And so last Tuesday, I had somewhat uh, uh, an experience with the Lord where he began to talk with me on such a level. And, and he asked me, are you, and this was something that he was, you know, uh, consulting me about. He said, are you maximizing? Not that you're not working in your field, not that you're not doing what you 
feel that you should be doing. But the word here is maximizing. Are you maximizing the feel that God has put you in? And you might be saying, Lady O here today, well, what, what feel are you talking about? Whatever feel God has put you in, in the space of employment or in the space of ministry, whatever space that you're occupying. You know, for me, uh, uh, there are several spaces that I occupy. I am an evangelist. That is uh, uh, my calling first and foremost. Uh, and God trained me in evangelism in, in my career, which is life insurance and health insurance. I have a 215, 220, uh, and several different other licenses uh, to do insurance. And I've been doing that uh, since um, 79, somewhere in there. I've been doing that since the 70s. Uh, but that's the field that God has put me in. And, and back in the day, uh, if you, if, if any of you know about uh, life insurance and health insurance, when the insurance agents would go from door to door, knocking on doors, that's how I was trained. And God used that field to train me in evangelism. And I remember back then, one of my slogans was, you're going to either take some life insurance or life assurance, because I was going to talk to you about one or the other. And, and every day I I went out witnessing. I was talking to people about having life assurance. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? And if they didn't and they didn't want to know him, hey, I, I didn't push the issue. But I said, okay, well, do you have some life insurance? Because if you don't, if you don't want Jesus and you don't have life assurance, you're going to need life, uh, 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 life assurance. If you don't have life insurance, you're going to need life assurance. And every day I went out uh, to minister, and it was like, God, who would you have me to minister to? I was about doing kingdom business, and and, and last Tuesday morning, not yesterday, uh, but a week from yesterday, you know, God. God had a very serious talk to me in my prayer time and he said are you maximizing your field you may be called in medicine and health care you may be a teacher in the educational but whatever you know there are seven mountains that we pray for as intercessors you know the entertainment uh the, the education the financial the judicial system you know uh, there are seven mountains and you may be working in governmental poli uh you know the poli in, in political or the government, you may be working in one of those areas. And are you allowing uh, your light to shine? He says, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost, matter of fact, I, I put that here because God was dealing. Let me just read it because you know what? I have it here. I had put it uh, in my notes and my prayer times. But uh, 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 Matthew uh, um, 5, uh, Matthew the 5th chapter and the 13th through the 16th verse, it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt lose its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the feet of men. If God has called you to be the salt of the earth, then whatever marketplace you're in, whatever field that you're occupying, then you are to be the salt that season that feel. You are to be the salt that brings flavor. Yeah, that brings flavor to whatever area that you are working in, that you're operating in. And if you're not bringing flavor, and I mean bringing flavor as in, <clears throat> because you may not understand what I mean by saying that, uh, as a Christian, we should walk in the, the, the nine fruits of the Spirit which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Galatians, I believe, 5.13 talks about the love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance, long-suffering. And, and if you're the salt of the earth, then wherever you're, you're occupying, whatever space you're occupying, then you ought to be able to bring those gifts to the forefront. And if you're dealing or you're coming across the path of someone who's not walking in love, someone who's all confused, and they don't have any patience or they don't have any peace because they're confused. They're, you know, they're, they're, they are, are just, uh, uh, you know, going through a time of chaos in their life, whether it be personal or whether it be what's going on in the world. You ought to be that anchor that can anchor them in that peace, that can anchor them in that, that you know, having long suffering with them and patience with them. 
But if you're walking around and there's no peace in you, if you're walking around and you're so busy, caught up in what you got to do, me, myself, and I, there's no love. People are not seeing the joy of the Lord. They're not seeing the love of God radiating through you. Then you have lost your flavor. Because the flavor of God and, and the kingdom is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So, you know, I know today, you know, I just wanted to come on real quick to let you know that we are doing great. We are doing fine. Amen. The, uh, Hurricane Adelia, uh, we didn't, uh, I, we hardly got any rain. Actually, I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning uh, to pray and I, I thought I was going to hear rain on the roof. And I was like, Lord, I don't hear any rain. So I got up and I said, it's got to be drizzling or something. And I went out and looked out the door and, and it wasn't even raining. <laughs> And, you know, they said three o'clock was when it was supposed to hit us, the heavy, uh, heavy rains, and it was supposed to be making landfall. But, you know, thanks be to God, glory be to God, it kind of deterred a little bit, and it went in through uh, 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 Tallahassee instead of coming in through Tampa Bay. Uh, we're about 30 minutes from Tampa Bay and about 10 minutes, actually, from some of the beaches here uh, in the Gulf. And so, um, you know, I just give God the praise. I give God the praise that the, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Uh, but, you know, I, I just had to come on today to let you know that this is the year of judgment, and God is judging his people. Are you doing what it is that he's called you to do? Uh, because let me tell you, uh, I do feel that, that this, this uh, hurricane season is not over yet. And I do feel that there are going to be some, some hurricanes that, that, that are pretty uh, bad this year. Uh, we're still early in the hurricane season. You know, the hurricane season is from June to like November. Uh, and, and so usually it gets really ugly around August and September. Uh, but I am praying that God God's grace and his mercy prevails. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to, you know, just say to you, you know, um, you got to work out your own soul salvation. Strengthen your relationship with him. Strengthen your personal relationship with him. You know, everyone that I talk to, everyone uh, is going through their own tailor-made, that's what I call it in this season. They're going through their own tailor-made uh, uh, trials, tribulations, experiences. Why? Because God is judging us all. He's judging us all. He's he's asking, do you really love me or do you just love me for what I can do for you? Do you love me because I'm God and you should worship and honor and reverence me? Or do you love me because you, you just, you know, you just trying to get what you can get out of me? And it's time out for using God. It's time out for, uh, you know, just uh, uh, trying to get what you can get from God. But then you don't have any concern about the kingdom of God. He says, my kingdom come, my will be done in earth. And he asked me on last Tuesday, he said, you know, do you really want my kingdom to come? Because when we're really concerned about the things of God and the kingdom of God, just like, you know, we love our house and, and where we live and we want to keep it, you know, uh, beautiful and we want to decorate it and we want people to come see it. Then if we're in the kingdom of God, we should love the things of God. We should want to feel our, our, our vessels because we are the church. We should want to fill our, our vessel and our home, this church here, with the things of God, with prayer, with, 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 with fasting, with studying out the word of God, with, you know, wanting to share the love of God with other people. And I certainly know that, you know, when the Lord, you know, when, when he came to ask me, I was not able to say that I had 100% been maximizing my field. But you know, I repented. And I just want to say that to you today. If you have not been maximizing the field that God has put you in, he says that you are the salt of the earth. Salt is a preservative. It's a flavor. It's an enhancer. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a purifying agent. You know, if you are the salt, then wherever you go, you ought to be an enhancer to life. You ought to be able to in, to purify the, the sphere that you're operating in. If that's on your job, you know, people ought to be able to see the light 
a light. He said, you know, that, that we are the light of the world, a candle that cannot be put under, a, 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 you know, to put a candle that cannot be put under a cover or hid. Why? Because we are the light. And if you are the light, then in your community, you should be shining. Wherever you go, you should be shining. Don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your flavor. It is impossible to lose our Christ. It's, it, is, it is possible. I'm sorry. It is possible. And that's where I feel that a lot of the church has fallen upon in this season. Because it is possible to lose our Christ-like life and our influence. It is possible. The disciples who fail to live up to their calling are not only worthless, they are no longer disciples. If you say you're a disciple of God and you have failed to live up to what he's called you to do, then you're like the salt that has lost its flavor. And he says that you're good for nothing. And I know, I know, I know that <laughs> when God created you, when he created me, he created us something. He created us special. He created us to be the image of him. So today I want to say, don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your ability to season whomever you come around, wherever you're living, wh wherever you're working, wherever you're going you know, to church, whatever center of influence that you are operating in, don't ever fail to lose your flavor. Be the seasoning that God has called us to be in the earth realm. This is Lady O here saying to you, I love you very much. And yes, we are doing just fine here in the beautiful city of Waimama, Florida. Uh, like I said, about 30 minutes from Tampa. Uh, and I just want you to know that God loves you so much. And so do I. Thank you. Mm -hmm.